Presented by RomulusIT.com, offering remote support for common computer problems. I've not seen you do this before. You know, I've, I've spent a number of years listening to, you know, Rollins and, and Jello Biafra do this work in the space. Um, what sort of interested you to, you know, get into that or, or fill up your time with, with doing that outside of your um, uh, musician work with the band? I never really was looking to do it. It's, it's one of the few times in life when something actually did fall in my lap. It's, you know, I, I tend to find that doesn't happen in life. If you want something, you have to make it happen. Nobody's handing you anything. And this literally got handed to me. Right. <laughs> Maybe I've been doing it wrong all these years. Maybe I should just <laughs> stay home and wait for the phone to ring. <laughs> um, yeah, it, that's literally what happened. We, were, I was off tour at some point from Anthrax about five years. I'm gonna, I know when it was. It was back in 2012, I believe, because we were about to start a motorhead tour in Europe towards the end of 2012. So it was before we were coming over for that. And uh, my agent called and said, hey, would you be interested? Uh, this promoter in London is doing a series of these dates. It's called something like rock stars say the stupidest things. And uh, he'd really like to have you like show up and, and do one of these shows. And I said, what do you mean? Like, I, I don't understand. He goes, well, you know, just you. It, it would just be you, not the band. You'd show up and and uh, and do a performance. And and I said, well, I, I don't do that. Like, I, what, I, I'm going to sit there with a guitar and, like, sing Anthrax songs? I, I don't understand. Like, that's not, uh, first of all, I'm not the singer. Yeah. I, you know, I, th- nobody wants to hear that. And uh, he said, no, dummy. <laughs> it's <laughs> It's stories. You get on stage and talk and just tell stories. Oh, okay. And I kind of, you know, I, I said, you know what? I kind of, I looked at my calendar and I said, well, we've got about three, four months until we're coming over. Uh, I, I think I can handle that. That, I, you know what? I'm curious enough to say yes, just to see if this, this is something that I could do because I'd seen Rollins a bunch of times too, o- over the years, you know, when he f- first even started yep. doing talking shows and uh and i loved it you know he would he would hold an audience for three hours and i I would never once you know be looking at my watch or going to grab a beer or anything like i was literally enthralled for three hours watching him speak and which i thought was pretty amazing and uh so i was like yeah yeah i'm in tell him i'm in and uh so I, you know, I kind of made a plan. I'll, I'll start figuring out. I got lots of great stories. I, I, I've got lots of tales to tell that I, I tell in the bar with my friends. You know, I, I could get on stage and tell some of these great stories. And all right, I'll start thinking about them. I'll start putting them together. Blah 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 blah. And two months go by, and I, I didn't do like one ounce of work. And uh, <laughs> and then oh man, I got a, I got about a month till we're leaving for, for England. And I got that show. That's right. Shit. Uh, I better start thinking about this. All right. Well, all right. I'm busy this week. Next week, I'm definitely going to start thinking about this. Cut to <laughs> it's the night before the show uh, in London. And I'm in the hotel room and this show is taking place the day before our uh, anthrax tour starting. Right. So I already got that kind of weighing on me. And now I got to go do something I've never done before in my life. And I'm in my hotel room and I'm like sweating what the hell am I going to do? And I'm about to pick up the phone to call uh, the band's agent and say, you got to cancel. You got to cancel tomorrow. I, I can't do it. You know, I just, I, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I, I have no idea what I'm going to do on stage tomorrow night. And just tell the promoter guy, Scott got sick and we can't <laughs> risk, you know, having to cancel the first Anthrax show and just make up some shit. Who's going to care anyway? No, it's not like people have seen it already and they're going to be <laughs> bummed that they missed it. People aren't even going to, they don't even know what they missed. So who cares? Right. I'm about to pick up the phone and make that call. And my wife Pearl says to me, don't cancel. What you, like you're not canceling. I'm like, what am I going to do? I, I have no idea what I'm doing tomorrow night. And she says, you, how many times? Cause at least I had made like a list of some stories and, and uh, said, how many times have you told these stories with me and some of our friends in a bar around the world? Some of these stories, you know, these stories like the back of your hand. I'm like, yeah, but this is different. This is people who are paying hard earned 
British pounds to come sit in a room and expect to be entertained by me. And I'm going to get on, like, it's different sitting in front of a bunch of my friends who aren't judging me, you know, while I'm telling a tale like this. These are people who are, this is fucking London. You know, press is going to show up and, and say, who the fuck does this guy think he is telling stories? And, uh, you know, I'm, I was, I was shitting myself over the idea of having to do it. And, uh, so she's like, look, just, you're going to be fine. Just, you'll get on stage and you'll just start, just start talking and it's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Anyway, that, that it didn't really help, but I didn't cancel the show. And, uh, those five to 10 minutes before I had to go on the next night in London at this venue. And there was uh, about 300 people there to see me. Um, I've never been so nervous in my life. And I don't get nervous, hardly, like, hardly ever. And I, I'm not even that I'm afraid of public speaking because I have no problem getting up in front of people and talking. But I had just never done this before and uh, really felt like I, I was really kind of out of my element. And, uh, but what am I going to do? It was too late. So I, uh, you know, it, you get to that point, you have to do it. It's literally a have to. And uh, I walked out on stage and... Uh, I had this opening that I had come up with the night before when I was in the hotel room trying to cancel. I was like, well, I don't even know what to do. I walk, what do I do? I walk on stage and I, like, I don't even know what to say, you know? So I said, I got to have an opening. Somehow I came up with this idea to read a story as if it was my own, but it would be somebody else's story. Okay. And uh, somehow or another, I came across Anthony Kiedis's book online and yeah. i think i actually reached out to a friend of mine i said you've re you've read a lot of these rock and roll books i, I need a really debaucherous story that i want to read and people will think it's it's me and then uh, i'll say haha you assholes you know i, I it wasn't me you idiots and uh he's like oh dude anthony kiedis's book perfect because first of all anyone coming to see you probably won't have read anthony kiedis's book yes they'll all have read motley Crue or marilyn manson but they won't have read his book. So you're, so I, I, I Google it. And what do you know? The whole book, like, I didn't know you could actually steal books online too, <laughs> like records. Cause the whole book popped up. So I download like a PDF of it. And the first chapter just right. It goes right in. He starts describing this tale of sitting in the living room of his house in the hills in LA. And this lady comes over and fishnet stockings and, and shoots him up and blah. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is amazing. I'm going to walk out. I'm going to, put this on my phone and just walk out super serious. One little spotlight on me, sit down, be super serious, not even say hello, walk out and start reading this terrible story about getting shot up in my living room. And this whole crowd is going to think it's me. And they're going to be so bummed sitting there going, what the fuck is this show? What this is what this is going to be for the next two hours. Right. But even knowing I was going to do that, I was still shitting my pants. Right. And I walk on stage and I've got my phone and I sit down and people are clapping and I, I sit down and uh, my hand is visi visibly shaking. Like I'm holding my, my phone in my hand to read it and the mic's on a stand and, and my hand is shaking and I'm thinking these people can see my hand shaking, which I guess, all right, I'm telling this horrible tale. So maybe, uh, you know, maybe they think he's having a real hard time reliving this tail so that's why his hand is shaking anyway i tell this horrible story and then it's fucking you could hear a pin drop in the room <laughs> and there's a lot of people in the room who've known me for a long time yeah. right and I, I i could hear people i hear someone actually say like oh my god I, I i had no idea he he ever was a junkie i didn't know this like people are freaking out and i finished the story and i like put my phone away and i i get up from the stool and i take the mic off the stand. And now I kind of knew I had the crowd because of how quiet it was. And I still haven't said anything. And then I finally, I say to them pretty, you know, shitty, shitty story, huh? And, uh, I'm like, yeah. So you all thought that was me, you fucking assholes. <laughs> and I'm like, this is from Anthony Kiedis's book, scar tissue, you idiots. Right. And totally breaks the tension. I get a huge laugh and all my nerves literally drained out of my, like from my head, out my body, out of my feet and gone. And I spent the next two and a half hours talking to the crowd and I had the fucking time of my life. 
Excellent. I walked off stage with like the Joker smile on my face and I grabbed my agent and I said, we got to do more of this. This episode is brought to you by Romulus IT, offering fast, affordable remote support for common computer problems, including troubleshooting, health checks, virus removal, and software support. Visit RomulusIT.com to get your computer back on track.